Welcome back everyone, this is Recon Stewart, and today we're continuing our in-depth tutorial of the A10C CDU and IGI navigation system. Today we're going to explore the function select key navigation, or FSK nav, and uh, see that everything that it has to offer underneath uh, this uh, selection here. So we'll go ahead and make sure we're in uh, page other and we'll go ahead and hit nav and the nav page uh, allows us to set navigation parameters and branch to other navigation sub pages including align, time, update, DTS upload, blended, attributes, attributes, options, and divert. The align page allows the selection and display of the align sub page, time, so forth, DTS. Um, so let's go ahead and skip to the align sub page. So this page has the impo uh, following important functions, which we've already seen, I believe. Uh, position source, coordinate format, either longitude or latitude or UTM. The grid and spheroid of WG84, the alignment time and status, uh, ground alignment, in-flight alignment, and navigation. Then we'll go ahead and go back to, and that'll take us back to INS page, but we want the nav page. And here we are in the nav time page. Uh, this is where we can set, again, I think we've seen this before. Um, we can adjust desired time on target here, and we can adjust uh, local time, and then we see our current year, month, date, and time. And we'll go back to the nav page and the update page. This page allows us to select a waypoint and provide an overhead INS update. Again, we've seen this before in the INS system where you would overfly a known um, landmark and hit the mark point and then hit proceed, which would allow you to update the INS system. And of course, it updates the time to go and the elevation, uh, magnetic variation, distance, all that good stuff. So if we were to change to 3.3, nope, that didn't work. And we'll come back here to nav, DTS upload. Again, we've seen this page before. Uh, nav, all of it, update all original data, update original nav data, or just update CDU last e preferences, or just recent nav data. We'll come back to nav and and then we've got blended, which lets you. Uh, it's a rotary dial, so blended INS GPS or both. We'll leave it in blended. Uh, we'll come down here and click on the attributes subpage. Now this is a complicated page from what I understand. So each waypoint in the CDU database can be assigned unique attributes. By default, a waypoint's attributes are a scale in route, steer to from, and vertical navigation mode 2D, which is right here. Uh, there are two classes of attributes uh, for a specific waypoint, and those are specific flight plan. Waypoint specific attributes, these are used when the AAP steer point dial is set to mission or mark. These can be uploaded from the DTS or entered from the waypoint page. And then flight plan, plan specific attributes, these are used when the AAP steer point dial is set to mission or mark, or can be uploaded or created in the waypoint attributes page. So, the scale, L5 and L6, use the scale setting to determine the course deviation indicator, CDI, and glide scope indicator sensitivity. The sensitivity is measured by the dots on the HSI. Let me see if I can get a better look at this. Okay. So you've got the glide scope dots, which are here, 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 and here. 
And you've got the CDI dots, which are here, 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 and here. So CDI deviation indication is for in route, in waypoints that are in route uh, classified waypoints, have one dot of two nautical miles and, excuse me, one dot of two nautical miles, two dots of four nautical miles, or glide slope sensitivity, one dot is 500 feet and two dots is 1,000 feet. Now, if you were to set your waypoint as a terminal waypoint, then it would make these more sensitive. For instance, on a CDI dot, it would only be 250 feet per dot, or 500 feet for two dots, on the glide slope, it would be 100 feet uh, for one dot and 200 feet for two dots. If you were to set your waypoints as an approach waypoint, then the CDI uh, deviation would be one dot is 1.5 degrees, two dots is three degrees, and on the glide slope, one dot would be 0.35 degrees and two dots would be 0 0.70 degrees. Again, you set these waypoints so that when you're using uh, ILS landing or navigation systems, these dots have more specific meanings or uh, like 100 to 200 feet of, as opposed to half a nautical mile to a tenth of a nautical mile. Let's go back to the nav page, and I think some of you are familiar with this uh, divert page. The divert page displays the waypoint number, waypoint identifier, magnetic heading, and range, and time to go for four closest divert airfields. These divert airfields are listed in descending order with the closest divert airfield with respect to time to go at present speed listed first. The information pertaining to these airfields is obtained from the navigation waypoint database. So if we click on divert, You can see that waypoint 52 is Creech. It's heading 328 for seven nautical miles, and time to go is a minute 24. Uh, and then we've got Creech Air Force Base, which is waypoint 712, which is 336 uh, heading, 7.6, almost the same. Time to go is the same. Then our next closest is Nellis, waypoint 711. It is heading 101 for 33 nautical miles, and it'll take us 6 minutes and 20 seconds to get there. And then uh, my waypoint that I entered is landing zone 06, which is the same as Nellis Air Force Base. And that is the navigation page. That one wasn't too bad. So join us next time. We'll be continue our in-depth look at the CDU of the A10C in DCS Digital Combat Simulator. This is Recon Stewart. We will see you next time.